How's it going? This is Rex Roo here. Welcome back to another gaming tutorial. And uh, it is a wonderful day outside. Wonderful day for sitting at your home uh, on the computer and uh, just putting on a mic and doing a tutorial. So, hence, I'm doing one. And just because I haven't really done one in a while, um, I decided that um, I would go ahead and do one now. So anyway, guys, uh, yes, welcome to another gaming tutorial. And today we're going to learn about, obviously, by the title of this video, particles, as you guys can see here. And in particular, blood particles. Now, really quickly, I don't want to make this a huge intro. And um, one thing I really do want to mention before we actually begin is that I'm going to try to go a little faster and um, not spend a whole bunch of time kind of talking about other things, you know, um, just about the tutorial itself and actually do the tutorial. So let me know if you guys kind of like that instead of me kind of giving a bit more of a uh, intro. I guess to these videos kind of explain what's going to go on in the uh, beginning. So anyway, pretty much what we're going to be doing is obviously learning how to do particles in Game Maker, and um, we're not going to be doing just part blood particles. Basically, what we're going to be doing is by the end of this tutorial, my hopes are that you guys will be able to actually create um, something other than just blood. You know, whether it's uh, you know feathers coming off a bird, eggshells coming off an egg. Those are just examples of uh, some things I've done in the past. But um, you know, pretty much whatever you want. So this system is going to be really easy and probably something you haven't really done before either, um, only because this system is um, going to be uh, somewhat of a manual system. So, anyway, uh, really easy to do and um, not going to be real overly complicated like a lot of other tutorials that are out there, not calling anyone out. But, uh, you know, uh, if you guys have seen any of those, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, with that said, let's go ahead and hop over to the Game Maker screen and get started. Alright, so we're here in the Game Maker screen. As you can see, everything's already pre made for the purpose of pacing in this video. And uh, pretty much what we're going to go and do is uh, go over some of these sprites here, rather all of these sprites, and uh, then go over to their processing objects here. And um, I will be going over these in uh, you know a bit of detail in uh, um, such a way that you guys will be able to understand it after the tutorial and understand what it does. But at the same time, want to make sure that um, this tutorial is somewhat short because this is a pretty simple thing to do. And um, you know I want to make sure that uh, we go through it at a steady pace. But at the same time, you guys understand what's going on. So with that said, let's go ahead and go over these sprites. Right, so what we're going to go and need for this tutorial is, um, I would also, really quickly, before we actually begin into, or get into this, rather, um, make sure to start this off on a brand new Game Maker file, just so you have something to test it out on, you know, because this can get a bit, not complicated, but, you know, it's always good to kind of just test something out before you apply it to your actual game. So, just a little word of advice there, unless you, uh, think you're ready to actually apply this tutorial to the game at hand, but anyway, a uh, little, you know, little tip there. So, go ahead and create a sprite, name it SPR underscore blood or whatever the heck you want to name it, I guess, if you want to, don't really want to make uh, blood exactly, you want to make, I don't know, maybe a black dot or something, but basically all I did was create a brand new sprite, 8x8, and made a simple red little circle there, or somewhat of a circle, and um, one thing I really want to mention before I actually continue on is 8x8, um, is, uh, pixels rather, is a pretty good uh, dimension, I guess, or rather are pretty good dimensions uh, for pixels um, to be, or rather sprites to be, um, for your um, your particles, and the reason for that is, I would say, don't go above 32 by 32 or below 4 by 4, um, only because th those two, if you go above or below that, Game Maker has to process a bit more, and um, I mean, obviously, go if you go a bit below, sorry, uh, 4 by 4, then it's going to be a bit tiny, and it's going to kind of, I don't know, it's going to get a bit weird from what I've uh, experienced with, um, only because it's so small. So anyway, let's go ahead and digress to the SBR and score test object. This is going to be the object which we use to click on the particles come out of it. Uh, it is a 32 by 32 black square, just in case you guys are wondering, just created a square and uh, colored it black. And then the next thing I went ahead and did is uh, create another, or rather created another sprite, and just go ahead and name this one SPR underscore ground. And the only reason that we're going to create this is because in 32 by 32 white square, it's just so we can kind of uh, se or teleport the test from the square, and uh, the blood will show up a bit better on the ground as well if it's a white square. So anyway, let's go ahead and now create three objects of the sprites in which you just created. And go ahead and name them uh, name them the same. Uh, let's go ahead and put an obj underscore instead of an spr underscore in front of them. So we're going to go and start off on the ground object here. First thing we're going to go and do is just hit visible. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, choose the sprite group for our ground here. And name it ground. Obviously, obj underscore ground. And that is all for that. Pretty simple, right? So, um... <laughs> So now we're going to get into some of the more meat of the tutorial here. This is going to be our particle, obj underscore blood, choose the blood particle, and just make sure to check it visible. Now, what we're going to use here, the system that we're going to be uh, kind of going along 
is, um, or following rather, is basically we're going to do this all manually. We're going to create an actual particle instead of just choosing an option that creates it for us. So what we're basically going to be doing is specifying what exactly we want to do with this particle, or rather the other way around, what we want this particle to do for us. So um, we're basically going to be doing this, um, you know, all manually, and this is a lot more hands-on and gives you a lot more control with your particles and what you want them to do. So, um, you know, very good system and very simple as well. So let's just go ahead and start out um, with this little blood system here. And, of course, you can modify this later, but we're going to go ahead and now go add event, create, Click and drag over some code from the execute con or rather the control event, and uh, click and drag over an execute code action. And there goes my chicken nuggets, in which I will get in a little bit here. So what we're going to go and do is copy and paste this code from the description box. And um, if it's not there, it will be in a pastebin file, so just in case you guys are wondering. Uh, so you can go and click on that link, copy and paste the code from there and to here. And basically what this code is saying, and I'm going to try to go through this code, uh, all these codes, a little quickly here. But just enough so you guys are able to understand them. Don't worry, this isn't hard to do or understand. Uh, very easy system. So pretty much what it's saying is motion underscore set random. And then random is basically setting the... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, basically areas in which this particle, once it's created, will go. So let's say, obviously, we have this little square here, or this little, uh, this little square here, and when we have the particles here, um, it obviously just goes ahead and shoots out. And just give me a moment here. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I just want to make sure that my recording software was set up to the uh, right configuration for the options there. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to actually do this tutorial over again like I did one time uh, when I was actually trying to do this. So, anyway, nonetheless, I'm just going to basically set the direction in which this particle is going to be able to shoot out of this block. So, that's pretty much what that does. You can go ahead and, uh, let's go back into the object here, uh, mess around with these values, 100 and 10, just kind of see what they do and which directions uh, they set the object. So, the right directions I have them on now um, are set to, you know, in, in kind of an up slanted direction. So you can go ahead and again mess with those values if you want some difference. So um, we're going to go ahead and move along to the second line of code here. Gravity direction equals 270. So this is basically setting the direction of the gravity, which means um, let's say the uh, rather, you know, let's go ahead and give an example. Basically, um, what it's saying is that the direction of the gravity is currently 270, which means it's going down, like regular gravity. Um, you could, of course, change this, you know, if you wanted, if you're maybe in space or something, you know, either gravity could be going upwards or, you know, something like that. So, you can go ahead, again, mess around with this value here. And pretty much all the values that you're going to be able to mess with here are the number values. And, um, not any of this code, really, but, you know, if you just want to kind of mess with the, um, values here of the, uh, various, uh, lines of code, make sure to just only mess with the numbers, because that's where everything really matters and where everything kind of takes place. And um, also, you'll notice that there's these nice comments here, just to give you guys a bit of insight on what these, uh, what these all are, just in case you guys uh, kind of forget about that. So, uh, and we're going to go ahead and go down to the alarm 0 equals 300. Now, most of you guys should know what this means. Uh, basically, it's kind of like a timer that's going to go off, and when it goes off on alarm 0 over here, this piece of code will activate. But we'll get into this in a little bit. So, basically, we're going to go ahead and finally set one more thing, and it's going to be a, uh, <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, variable, sorry, you couldn't remember the name there, or the name, and this is basically going to be our fading variable to create that kind of nice little fading effect that we get the blood. So we're going to go ahead and again talk about this later. Um, for now, let's go ahead and hit OK and go to the alarm zero event. So just go and add event, alarm zero, zero, and same thing, control, or control tab, execute code action. And simply what this is going to be do, or what this is going to do, or I guess be doing here, um, is just kind of turning our fade variable on. So basically when, after 300 steps, right, our alarm will go off and our value, or rather our variable, will be true. So it will be activated. And when it's activated, something will happen, which we're going to specify in the step event. So let's go ahead and go add event, step, and control tab, click and drag over and execute code action. And here's where our fade variable comes into play. So basically what this code is saying is if our fade variable is true, if it's activated, um, which it's only activated once the alarm goes off, uh, image alpha uh, minus equals 0 0.02, very small value, but very big in the long run. And basically what this is saying is um, all this code is it's going to kind of decrease in terms of uh, visibility. So it's going to become more and more invisible. And once it becomes completely invisible, as you guys see here, I mean, this has a zero here. Once you can't even see it anymore, it just destroys itself. So, I mean, you don't want a whole bunch of uh, invisible pixels everywhere, uh, you know, objects everywhere that GameMaker has to process and uh, stuff like that because that could cause a little bit 
little lag here and there depending on how long and uh, how many particles are actually being put out. So let's go ahead now and uh, once we uh, finish that step up or step event, we're going to go ahead and go uh, collision with our ground. Same thing, control, execute code. You guys know uh, the uh, little uh, little thing there. So what we're going to go and do here is speed equals zero, fade equals false. So uh, pretty self-explanatory stuff here. I'm really sure, or I fa I'm fairly sure, uh, rather that you guys understand what this means already. I mean, speed, obviously, you guys know what that is. Our fade variable, we went over that. So we're going to go ahead and just OK out that. And add event. Other outside rooms. Sorry, I had to take a quick drink of water there. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing. Control, click and drag over some execute code and instance destroy. So once its object is out of the room, it automatically destroys itself. Just to kind of uh, be efficient like that and uh, keep that lag feature out of the way. All right, so that is it for our particle, guys. Um, the only thing left is to create our particle. So what we're going to go ahead and do is now that we've kind of created the particle itself, we know what we want it to do. Uh, we know, you know, where we want uh, where we want it to go, and we kind of specified the particle itself. We've created our particle. We want it to be able to actually be created. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to our little test object here, add event, and we're going to go ahead and go left pressed. Same thing. Control execute code. Instance create X Y OBJ blood. All right. So for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the instant create command, um, or I guess code, uh, basically what it's doing is when we click on our object, it's going to create our OBJ blood object. However, this X and Y, just in case for uh, those of you guys aren't really familiar on what these really do, um, you know, I want to make sure I explain this to you guys, so you guys will be able to, you know, after you finish the tutorial, you guys will be able to take it, you know, anywhere you want and just know automatically what to do. So yeah, I mean, you guys will really understand, you know, maybe with a little testing here and there, a little trial and error, but you know, still, you guys will be able to at least be able to do this on your own and do what you want to do with these. So X and Y basically specifying the object uh, coordinates of where this is going to be created. So pretty much, since we haven't put anything in X or Y, um, basically X being uh, horizontal, Y being vertical uh, space, um, GameMaker is just going to assume that we, it's basically just going to create the object on top of this object. So I mean, there's no place that we've specified, so GameMaker is just going to be like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and just create this little object, OBJ Blood, on top of the current object, which is our test object. So that's how that works. Repeat 10. Now this is very important. Repeat 10. Uh, basically, if we were to take away this code, have it like that, all it would do is GameMaker would just create one instance of OBJ Blood, or OBJ Blood, one object of it, that's all. And it wouldn't repeat it or anything. This repeat 10 basically makes it so it creates multiple objects of our OBJ blood. And since it's obviously blood, you know, you don't just bleed one drop of blood from, you know, something. Well, I guess sometimes you do, but in this case, we don't really want that to happen. So, um, you know, and this goes for all particles as well, not just blood. Um, so if we were to uh, kind of change this down to 5, it would create five more instances of OBJ blood. So that's how that works. Um, you know, it just basically is there to create multiple instances, you know. Um, if you just wanted one, I guess you could minus that, but you know, mostly particles usually are more than one. So, uh, go ahead and keep that repeat 10 there if you want, you know, maybe 100 particles. Just add an extra zero, and there you go. So, uh, you know, keep in mind as well, um, when doing this, you want to have, you know, not too many particles on the screen at once, just because GameMaker will uh, kind of slow down a bit because it has to process all those particles. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and obviously create a room if you haven't already. Put the uh, test object in the room along with your ground. And I already showed you guys what uh, the end process or result of this tutorial is in the beginning of this tutorial, so no need to really do that. But yeah, guys, that is it for this tutorial. Um, I apologize if I went a bit fast and kind of explained everything a bit different than I usually do in my other tutorials. Um, you know, I want to try to make these, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to be more efficient and uh, make these as fast, but as, you know, uh, understandable as I can. So I apologize if I went, you know, maybe a bit too fast, or just kind of explain this story a bit differently, but hopefully it all worked out just the same, you guys understand it, and and uh, it is uh, working out great for you. So anyway, feel free to comment and rate on this tutorial, and maybe even subscribe to my channel, or subscribe to my channel for upcoming updates on future videos such as this one, and other various awesome techie type stuff and such. So, uh, until the next video guys, this has been Rex Furry, and uh, see you next time.